Hello everyone, I'm David, and today we'll explore another distressing scenario together. Lauren Hugelmere crossed paths with Matt Phelps during their middle school days, although they weren't particularly close at the time. Nevertheless, years later, when both Lauren and Matt reached the age of 26, an unforeseen event occurred. Despite not having communicated with Lauren for a significant period, Matt decided to reconnect with her via Instagram. Intrigued by the surprising outreach, Lauren approved Matt's request and reciprocated by following him back. Captivated, Matt delved deeper into Lauren's Instagram profile. While browsing through her posts, he found himself appreciating each one. There was something about Lauren that fascinated him, and he found himself irresistibly drawn to her. Over time, Lauren and Matt maintained a daily routine of texting and talking on the phone. They soon realized they shared many interests, especially their passion for Harry Potter, Star Wars, and various geeky subjects. Their discussions were brimming with laughter and mutual enthusiasm, and their bond swiftly evolved from friendship into something more profound. What particularly drew Lauren to Matt was his unwavering commitment to his faith. Having been raised in a Christian household, Lauren held deep reverence for God. She cherished the fact that Matt shared her devotion and found comfort in their mutual faith and aligned values. To observers, Lauren and Matt appeared to be a couple deeply enamored with each other. Their relationship radiated with joy and contentment, leading those around them to believe they had discovered their soulmates. It was inevitable that Matt would eventually decide to propose to Lauren. Dale, Lauren's father, held a deep protective instinct towards his daughter. He had always prioritized her well-being and safety, so the prospect of her marrying someone he barely knew stirred up considerable concern within him. Following Lauren and Matt's engagement, their loved ones organized an engagement party to commemorate the joyful occasion. Lauren was overjoyed and dressed elegantly in a breathtaking white gown. However, the atmosphere at the party shifted unexpectedly when Matt's mother arrived clad in white, a gesture perceived as disrespectful towards Lauren. It was clear to all in attendance that Matt's mother harbored discontentment towards her son's choice to marry Lauren. Feeling overwhelmed by frustration and disappointment, Lauren sought out Matt after the engagement party to address his mother's behavior. However, Matt brushed aside her concerns, explaining that he had been primarily raised by his grandparents instead of his parents. He confessed to having a strained relationship with his mother, emphasizing that her opinion held little significance to him. Following their engagement, Lauren and Matt opted to move to Raleigh, North Carolina in 2016. Despite the relocation, they remained steadfast in their commitment to Christian principles, continuing to navigate life guided by their faith. Matt secured employment at an in-home care company, where his diligence and dedication earned him the esteemed title of Employee of the Month. Lauren beamed with pride at her husband's accomplishments, yet she too played an indispensable role in their journey. She diligently supported their shared life by juggling multiple jobs simultaneously, often taking on up to four roles alongside her full-time position at a Fortune 500 company. Lauren was proactive in finding ways to bolster their financial stability. Among her endeavors, she engaged in babysitting as a side hustle and volunteered in the church nursery, providing care for children during services. Additionally, she ran a candle-selling business driven by her entrepreneurial spirit and unwavering determination to excel in every pursuit. The prospect of owning her own business held a special allure for Lauren, promising both financial independence and the chance to build something of significance. Every Tuesday evening, Lauren and Matt eagerly journeyed to her parents' home for their beloved game night. This weekly tradition held a special place in both of their hearts. Matt consistently arrived punctually, brimming with enthusiasm to engage in quality time with Lauren's family. He genuinely relished the chance to foster stronger bonds and deeper connections with them. In November 2016, Lauren and Matt joyously commemorated their love with a wedding ceremony in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Their special day overflowed with happiness, 
laughter, and a sprinkle of their mutual affection for all things nerdy. Among the delightful touches that made their wedding unforgettable was the incorporation of nerdy elements. Lauren and Matt reveled in it, with the groomsmen donning elegant suits while proudly brandishing their lightsabers, turning the wedding into a whimsical Star Wars-themed celebration. Soon after Matt and Lauren exchanged vows, fissures began to surface in their relationship. One significant issue revolved around Matt's unease regarding Lauren's close bond with a male friend from their church. Matt harbored suspicions that this friend held romantic feelings for Lauren, leading him to perceive their friendship as overly intimate. Despite Matt's concerns, Lauren attempted to reassure him, affirming her devotion to their marriage and emphasizing that her feelings for this friend were purely platonic. Matt's trust issues stemmed from painful experiences in his previous marriage. He disclosed that his former spouse had been unfaithful during a mission trip, and upon her return, she confessed to never loving him and abruptly ended their marriage. This betrayal and subsequent abandonment inflicted deep emotional wounds on Matt, causing him to grapple with inner turmoil for an extended period. He expressed that the effects of his first marriage were profound, describing enduring emotional turmoil for an extended duration. As Lauren and Matt's marriage advanced, a noticeable shift occurred in Matt's demeanor. Once cheerful and content, he began to exhibit signs of unhappiness, descending into a darker and more despondent state. It became apparent that a heavy burden weighed upon him, leaving him seemingly trapped in a somber place. Concurrently, Matt's connection to his faith began to wane, marked by a growing distance from church involvement, much to Lauren's dismay. This disengagement struck a deep chord within her as her faith held paramount importance. She interpreted her husband's reluctance to share this aspect of her life as a profound betrayal, feeling deeply hurt by his withdrawal. Lauren couldn't shake the feeling that Matt was dismissing everything she held dear. It seemed as though his love and appreciation for her had dwindled, leaving an ever-expanding void in their relationship. She yearned for a profounder bond with her husband, one rooted in shared values and interests. But Matt appeared uninterested in nurturing such a connection. Matt's increasingly lazy behavior became a source of great irritation for Lauren, who was tirelessly working multiple jobs to support them both. His repetitive cycle of finding employment only to quit after a few weeks became a frustrating pattern that exacerbated Lauren's already significant burdens. What particularly distressed her was Matt's reckless spending habits, which depleted their finances at an alarming rate, leaving Lauren struggling to replenish their funds. Despite the efforts of their concerned friends and family to lift him out of his depression, Matt remained unresponsive, preferring to retreat into the world of television and video games rather than seek help or engage in meaningful activities. This detrimental behavior not only jeopardized their financial stability, but also strained their relationship to its breaking point. Feeling overwhelmed and in dire need of support, Lauren reached out to her mother and sister for solace. She candidly confided in them, expressing her exhaustion from juggling four jobs and her deep frustration upon returning home to a disorganized house, piles of laundry, and meals yet to be prepared. Throughout it all, Matt appeared more invested in indulging in video games and squandering their finances, leaving Lauren feeling neglected and emotionally drained. Despite the growing chasm between them and Matt's peculiar behavior, Lauren remained resolute in her commitment to their marriage. Determined to overcome the obstacles they encountered as a couple, her unwavering devotion was unmistakable. Despite the difficulties, she remained steadfast in her belief that their marriage was worth fighting for, demonstrating her unwavering loyalty by standing by Matt's side through thick and thin. As Lauren and Matt approached their four-month wedding anniversary, their relationship remained fraught with tension. A notable shift that caused concern was Matt's conspicuous absence from their customary Tuesday night game night gatherings at Lauren's family home. This deliberate decision deeply wounded Lauren and her family, who perceived it as a deliberate act of disrespect towards them. Feeling increasingly disconnected from Matt, 
Lauren recognized the pressing need for change in their relationship. Despite her efforts to express her feelings and apprehensions, it appeared that Matt either wasn't listening or didn't grasp the gravity of the situation. Lauren grew worried that their marriage was drifting further apart, fearing the loss of the love they had once shared. At that juncture, Lauren felt a profound urgency to salvage her marriage with Matt and was prepared to undertake any measure necessary to restore harmony. Thus, when Matt suggested embarking on a road trip to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where his family resided, Lauren readily acquiesced. She believed that escaping with Matt could potentially rejuvenate their strained relationship and reignite the bond they once shared. However, upon their arrival in Bowling Green, Kentucky, Lauren and Matt were greeted with an unexpected turn of events. Despite their initial agreement to embark on a trip together with Matt's mother, her husband and his parents, the experience didn't unfold as anticipated. Despite their shared journey, Matt's mother's sentiments towards Lauren remained unchanged, and she persisted in offering her a cold and unwelcoming reception. Throughout the trip, Matt's mother maintained an icy demeanor, casting a pall of tension over the group and exacerbating the underlying discord. As the trip progressed, Matt's mother arranged a family photo shoot that included Lauren, a gesture that filled Lauren with anticipation and hope for a positive shift in their relationship. Several days prior to the scheduled photo shoot, Matt's mother texted Lauren, specifying that everyone should wear blue for the occasion. Excited to comply with the instructions and eager to participate, Lauren embarked on a shopping excursion, purchasing two new blue outfits, one for herself and another for Matt. She eagerly anticipated donning her chosen attire and being part of the cherished photo shoot. Upon arriving at the designated location, Lauren and Matt were dismayed to find that everyone except them was clad in white attire. Perplexed and disheartened, Lauren sought clarification from Matt's mother. However, rather than admitting her error, Matt's mother grew visibly upset and directed her frustration towards Lauren. She began to cast blame on Lauren, insinuating that it was her decision to wear blue. Despite Lauren's attempts to clarify that she had followed instructions diligently, and purchased blue outfits as instructed, Matt's mother persisted in escalating the confrontation. The situation spiraled out of control as Matt's mother threw a tantrum, ultimately resulting in the cancellation of the photo shoot. This turn of events left Lauren feeling frustrated and disheartened by the ongoing tension within the family dynamic. Upon returning from Bowling Green, Kentucky, Lauren and Matt's relationship continued its downward spiral. Matt's increasingly solitary habits, spent writing in his journals, raised red flags for Lauren as she noticed alarming shifts in her husband's behavior. Lauren's concerns deepened when she began to suspect that Matt was pilfering money from their Disney fund, earmarked for their future trip to Disney World. These suspicions were further fueled when she uncovered evidence suggesting that Matt may have also taken money from her purse without her knowledge. This troubling discovery left Lauren grappling with a profound sense of betrayal and uncertainty about the state of their relationship. During this tumultuous period, Lauren found solace in confiding her distress to her mother, often reaching out in tears over her suspicions regarding Matt's alleged theft from their vacation fund and her personal belongings. In one particularly vulnerable moment, she confided to her mother that their financial situation had become dire revealing that they only had enough money to cover their expenses for one month and were left with no reserves. This stark revelation plunged Lauren into a state of anxiety and fear as she grappled with the daunting realization of the significant financial hardship confronting her and Matt. Less than a year before embarking on their life together, Lauren and Matt commenced their marriage with $10,000 in savings, viewing it as a promising foundation for their future endeavors. However, at this juncture in their marriage, Lauren and Matt found themselves grappling with financial instability despite their initial optimism. They had inadvertently depleted their savings, leaving them vulnerable to the challenges they now faced. With their savings dwindling rapidly due to Matt's extravagant spending, Lauren found herself facing yet another unsettling situation. One evening, upon returning home from a grueling day at work, 
Lauren initiated a text conversation with Matt to discuss their dinner plans for the night. In passing, she mentioned that a female co-worker had stopped by their house earlier that day. This seemingly innocuous encounter stirred unease within Lauren, particularly given the strained state of her marriage to Matt. As she pondered the implications of this woman's visit, Lauren couldn't shake the nagging sense of apprehension, wondering if she should be alarmed by the prospect of another woman seeking out her husband at their home. Her apprehension deepened as she contemplated the shadows cast by the truth of Matt's first marriage. Motivated by her curiosity and an unyielding desire to uncover the truth, Lauren resolved to delve deeper into the complexities of Matt's past. She discovered that Matt and his first wife, Brooke Truitt, had crossed paths during their college years and blossomed into college sweethearts. After a courtship spanning two years, Matt proposed to Brooke, and the couple exchanged vows in matrimony. However, their marital bliss was tarnished by instances of infidelity. Brooke later revealed that Matt had strayed early in their relationship, confessing to a kiss with another woman. Despite the initial hurt, Brooke chose to forgive Matt. Unfortunately, history repeated itself as Matt was unfaithful once again, just before their wedding. In the face of his pleas for forgiveness, Brooke relented and ultimately married him, harboring hopes of a brighter future. Following their marriage, Matt and Brooke's relationship rapidly deteriorated under the weight of financial strain and mounting discord. Brooke accused Matt of frivolously spending money on items they couldn't afford, exacerbating their already precarious financial situation. Meanwhile, she shouldered the burden of supporting them both, working full-time to make ends meet. The persistent strain in their marriage exacted a heavy toll, leading Matt and Brooke to grow increasingly distant and emotionally disconnected from each other. Ultimately, their marriage succumbed to irreconcilable differences, culminating in a shocking revelation as Matt and Brooke parted ways in divorce. With the startling revelation that it was Matt, not his ex-wife, who had been unfaithful in his first marriage, Lauren confided in her parents. Filled with anger and a profound sense of betrayal, her family grappled with the implications of this newfound knowledge. Concerned about her father's protective instincts and fearing the potential repercussions if he were to confront Matt, they made the difficult decision to keep the truth concealed, opting to maintain silence and preserve the fragile peace within the family. As Lauren and Matt's marriage spiraled further into disarray, Lauren's mounting frustration with her husband reached a breaking point. The revelation of yet another betrayal shattered the already fragile remnants of trust between them. Just as Lauren dared to hope for reconciliation, she was confronted with evidence of Matt's latest breach of trust regarding their finances. Upon scrutinizing their recent credit card statement, Lauren was aghast to discover that Matt had recklessly splurged a staggering 7200 on video games in addition to another 100 on gift cards. These impulsive expenditures, made without Lauren's knowledge or consent, served as a stark reminder of Matt's disregard for their financial well-being and only served to deepen her disillusionment and amplify her doubts about his commitment to their marriage. Despite enduring relentless betrayals from Matt, Lauren remained steadfast in her resolve to salvage their crumbling marriage. Divorce was never a consideration for Lauren, who remained firmly committed to exhaust every avenue to mend their fractured relationship. Determined to confront the issue head-on, Lauren resolved to orchestrate an intervention alongside her mother and sister to address Matt's compulsive spending habits and the detrimental impact it was having on their marriage. During the intervention, Lauren, her mother, and her sister sought to collaborate with Matt in devising a comprehensive plan to address their budgetary concerns. To their relief, Matt displayed a positive attitude and demonstrated a sincere desire to rectify their financial issues. He expressed a genuine commitment to making positive changes in their marriage, signaling a glimmer of hope for their future together. On August 31, 2017, the unexpected appearance of the woman Matt used to work with at Lauren and Matt's front door caught Lauren off guard and filled her with distress. 
This sudden intrusion disrupted the sense of progress and stability that had been gradually returning to their relationship. Matt informed Lauren that he needed to leave with the woman, citing her need for his assistance with something, an explanation that left Lauren feeling bewildered and betrayed. Furious and feeling betrayed by Matt's abrupt departure with the woman from his past, Lauren's emotions reached a boiling point. Frantically reaching out via texts and calls, she sought answers and reassurance from Matt, only to be met with silence. Fueled by anger and hurt, Lauren turned to her sister, unleashing her pent-up frustrations. In her emotional turmoil, she declared her conviction that Matt was destroying her life and proclaimed to her sister that their relationship was over. Lauren disclosed that she had already communicated her decision to end things to Matt, marking a significant and definitive turning point in their tumultuous journey together. During the initial hours of September 1, 2017, an emergency call was received by a dispatcher, with Matt Phelps on the opposite end. Matt conveyed to the dispatcher, I believe I've killed my wife. I was dreaming, and when I switched on the lights, she was deceased on the ground. I'm covered in blood, and there's a knife stained with blood on the bed, and I suspect I'm responsible. She's motionless. Oh my God, I'm terrified. She didn't merit this. As Matt communicated with the dispatcher, his voice quivered with panic and fear. His tone was uncertain, laden with horror and remorse. Throughout his conversation with the 911 dispatcher, Matt shared the possible reason behind his actions. He mentioned that he had consumed coracidin cough and cold medicine, potentially exceeding the recommended dosage. Matt admitted to taking the coracidin because he believed it would ease his symptoms and assist in achieving a more restful sleep. Coracidin is a widely available non-prescription drug typically employed to alleviate symptoms of the common cold and flu. This medication is formulated with antihistamines, decongestants, and analgesics to reduce nasal congestion, cough, and throat discomfort. Nevertheless, coracidin is linked to some adverse effects such as sleepiness, lightheadedness, and bewilderment. The severity of these side effects can increase when the drug is consumed in excessive quantities or mixed with additional medications. Shortly after Matt contacted 911 to declare that he had murdered his wife, officers from the Raleigh Police Department reached their residence. They encountered Matt on the front steps upon arrival. The police quickly detained him, making sure he was securely in custody. Upon entering the residence, law enforcement officers were confronted with a dreadful sight in the main bedroom. Lauren's lifeless body was curled up in the fetal position on the floor of the room. The scene was macabre, with blood scattered across the carpet walls, comforter, and bed. The scene profoundly unsettled even the most experienced police personnel. The copious amounts of blood combined with Lauren's still form created a nightmarish tableau. The crime scene investigation team was dispatched and commenced their detailed work of securing all available evidence. They thoroughly inspected every segment of the dwelling looking for indicators that might shed light on the incident's occurrence. Methodically, they recorded the surroundings, capturing images, obtaining samples, and collecting any objects that seemed pertinent to the criminal act. While the crime scene unit delved deeper into gathering evidence in the residence of Matt and Lauren, law enforcement had the challenging task of visiting Lauren's parents to break the tragic news of their daughter's demise. When they reached the family's home and knocked, Lauren's mother answered, anxiously inquiring about her daughter's well-being. The responding officer gravely acknowledged that there was indeed something wrong. As Lauren's mother's anxiety escalated, she asked whether her daughter was deceased. The officer confirmed the heartbreaking truth. Stricken with grief, she mustered the courage to ask the most critical question, whether Matt was responsible for Lauren's death. The officer, with a sense of sorrow, affirmed her fears, admitting that Matt had indeed killed Lauren. Upon learning that her sister had been murdered by her husband, Lauren's sister was abruptly awakened by her mother's heart-wrenching screams, echoing with shock and despair. She hurriedly descended the stairs, and as she arrived at the bottom, she was met by the police officers positioned at the front door. There, her deepest fears were confirmed, 
her sister had indeed passed away. At the precinct, Matt was interrogated by detectives about his role in the killing of his spouse. Ultimately, Matt opted to seek legal representation, prompting an immediate cessation of the interrogation following his request. Subsequently, law enforcement proceeded to escort Matt to a medical facility for a blood analysis to ascertain whether he was affected by coricidin during the incident. After the completion of the blood examination, Matt was taken to the county detention center where he was formally charged with murder. Subsequent to his incarceration, law enforcement carried out a comprehensive review of his personal diaries and electronic devices. This investigation aimed to uncover any further proof or insights that might clarify his motives for taking his wife's life. In the course of examining his online activity, the officers identified an unusual trend in Matthew's internet searches in the weeks preceding Lauren's demise. He had been exploring information on coricidin, particularly concerning its interaction with alcohol. Additionally, law enforcement uncovered a clandestine Instagram account owned by Matt, which contained multiple posts about death, satanic figures, and the well-known film American Psycho. This content, showcasing violent anti-Christian themes, starkly contrasted with the persona Matt publicly displayed, that of a prospective pastor. The toxicology results for Matt were received, indicating only a minimal presence of cold medication in his bloodstream, levels not high enough to induce hallucinations. This detail lent further credence to the theory that Matt was conscious and not significantly affected by substances when Lauren was killed. The autopsy report for Lauren showed that she had been sleeping on her side when Matt entered the bedroom and initiated the attack by stabbing her once in the side. Subsequently, Matthew flipped Lauren over and inflicted multiple stab wounds to her face. The autopsy also demonstrated that Lauren had made efforts to fend off the attack. Defensive wounds were present on her arms, indicating her attempts to protect herself. In the tragic event, Lauren suffered a total of a 23 stab wounds. On October 5, 2018, Matthew Phelps entered a guilty plea for the first-degree murder of his spouse, Lauren, resulting in a life sentence without parole eligibility. At the sentencing, Phelps faced his ex-in-laws and conveyed deep remorse for his actions. He admitted his guilt and discussed the profound feelings of guilt and embarrassment he experienced. Matt described himself as monstrous and stressed the illogical and irrational nature of his violent act. Lauren's mother addressed the courtroom, stating, Lauren was beautiful inside and out. The actions of Matthew James Phelps have forever altered me. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more crime stories ahead.